Greetings and salutations, beans, both Lima and Garbanzo. It is I, Eric J. Chucky, joined, as always, by the boy. Hey, also all the beans in between on the bean spectrum. Hello. You know what? It's... <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. Legumes and peanuts, even. Uh, you know what? Yeah. We're, this is an inclusive podcast. Yeah, we're inclusive as fuck. I don't care if you're a hazelnut. Come join the party, buddy. Movies. I wish there was... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a bit about how I wish there was a nut I hated, but there's not. <laughs> but yours was way better. Just way fucking better. Uh, if you can't do a segue, don't. <laughs> So, we're doing more movie homework. Uh, if you're not familiar with the concept, there's a bunch of podcasts uh, on the channel. You can watch. Same concept. Since 2013, for me, 2012, for White here, we have been keeping track of every movie that we've watched in a big list uh, on social media. Uh, and we're going back through and doing uh, sort of little mini reviews of the whole list. One for every year for movies both he watched and I watched. And we ended up calling it movie homework because that's kind of how it feels. Congratulations, you're up to date. Let's move on. When you stumbled over my name, I thought for sure you were going to call me the boy. And I don't know why I thought that. You have 27,000 nicknames. I sure do, man. And I, they it's an ever-increasing list. In some circles, I, I am I, known as Ludlow Sweetbelly. That is not a joke. <laughs> um, I feel like a con man in the Old West. Like, I... <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I, I think what happened there was I almost used your birth name. Oh, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's what I open the podcast with. It's what's on my books, which are available for purchase in the description. A new one is coming out soon. It may already be out by the time you listen to this podcast. But it is not what I call him. No. Uh, anyway, without any further ado, because, like, man, we preamble a lot, but there's no reason for it. It's fun. Yeah, fun is good. Let's talk about movies, which are also good. It, as is the important tradition that shall never be broken again, we opened 2016 with Saint Young Men, a delightful anime about Jesus and Buddha moving into a small apartment in exotic Japan together. For their vacation. For their vacation. From heaven. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I have spoken, We, I think we have talked everything about this movie there is to talk. There is no more talk to do. Um... Movie it's good. good. Yep. Movie yep. good we watch every year. And we'll watch every year. I apologize. Uh, your quote for this movie? <clears throat> Exotic Japan. Ah, yes. A wonderful quote relating to the movie. Mine was, nice idea. <laughs> uh, which it's great because those are the two we say the most in real life as we continue to refer to the movie. Um, the next flick... Whoa, we watched... Movies on the same... Wow, that's... Oh, because the next... No. Yeah, the next day. New Year's Day. Yeah, we both watched a movie. Eve. Yeah. Um, I watched Kung Fury on your recommendation, because you mm -hmm. watched it last... Uh, 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, mine was, thanks, bro! I remember where that was, too. <laughs> this is a bonkers movie, but fun. And it's short, too. So. Oh, God, yeah. It's, it's like barely, yeah, barely feature length. Uh, that's not even feature length. Uh, I watched Escape from L.A. for the first time. You would think I would have watched Escape from New York first, but it you wasn't didn't. on Netflix. Uh, the quote I chose was, gotta smoke. Um, I like this a lot. I mean, that's like not profound or anything, but... It's also a great movie to watch because, mm, to my memory, more than Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. is where Snake Plissken is Snake Plissken. Yeah, yeah. As a and fan of Metal Gear... It, it's where you. It's where you see all of the various cre things in social in social media in pop culture that are Snake Plissken. Mm. This is the Snake Plissken they're yeah. getting. Yeah, I, I do want to watch Escape from New York at some point. So get onto a streaming service I own. Yes, what are you doing, Escape from New York? Uh, let's see. I'm still on January first here. I watched Lord of War at the boys' recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's actually part of what happened. Is you happened to watch. Uh, Escape from L.A. unrelated, and then we did a thing where each of us recommended the other a movie and then watched it. Maybe. That that would make sense. We, we do little bits like that. Um, I liked Lord of War. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, Jared Leto's character was like a little trying at times, but it was It was good. supposed to be. Yeah, this is a good Nick Cage film. Um, 
I love this movie, but I'm sure it'll show up. I know I've watched it since 2016, so it'll show up at some point. It may have already showed up. It possibly has. We, we don't do these all at once, just in case that's clear. Um, you know, even above and beyond being a good Nick Cage film, I feel like this was a good movie. Yeah, I feel like this is a good Nick Cage film, but it's not a Nick Cage vehicle. Right. It is just a good movie that is improved by the inclusion of Nicolas Cage. Um, As the, Yuri Orlov. The quote I chose was... It's a long one. Strap in, everybody. Of all the weapons in the vast Soviet arsenal, nothing was more profitable than the automatic Kalashnikov model of 1947, more commonly known as the AK-47 or Kalashnikov. It's the world's most popular assault rifle, a weapon all fighters love, an elegant, simple nine pounds amalgamation of forged steel and plywood. It doesn't break, jam, or overheat. It'll shoot whether it's covered in mud or filled with sand. It's so easy, even a child could use it, and they do. The Soviets put the gun on a coin. Mozambique put it on their flag. Since the end of the Cold War, the Kalashnikov has become Rus the Russian people's greatest export I don't think I watched that on the same day did I good lord it was movie day on January 1st for me yeah this one had, I had nothing to do with no you had nothing to do with this I watched Wolf Cop which is about a cop who is a werewolf um it was fun but stupid or and stupid uh I think and yeah I don't know what I can tell you to make you watch Wolf Cop more than what I've already said. The quote I chose was, what What was that? Thank you, Willie, for helping me? <laughs> I don't need to know anything about Wolf Cop to know the exact character who said Good that. Good lord. I, this is also, but you go. You are still on January, still 1st. On January 1st. What Did you do like a weird movie marathon I day? must have. Man, on New Year's of all things, what, where the hell was everyone else? Uh, on January 2nd, like a normal person, I watched uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. All right. Now, may, watch me have watched Star Wars and need to catch up. Um, still on January 1st, I watched Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which turned out to be a way different movie than I thought it was going to be. It was funny. It was kind of cute. Oh, it Wash was, is in that. Yeah, it was really gory. Um, Alan Tudyk. Yeah, very clever. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend watching it to anyone who likes The Evil Dead. It's lighter than that. But same vibe? Very similar vibe. Um, the <laughs> quote I chose was, College Kids! Uh, Still, January Still January 1st? Still January 1st? Let's find out if I... I can't have possibly watched all of this on January 1st. No, okay. There's you lost the dates when the new new Facebook probably killed. New the dates. new Facebook killed my dates for some reason. All right. So, we'll go back to going back and forth. This is going to make things. We might have to cover things more than once, but that's okay cuz this is going to be a two-part podcast and you know it. So, <clears throat> Star Wars episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, I'm looking for a great warrior. Ooh, great warrior. <laughs> Wars not make one great. Uh, we will talk more about Star Wars, as we mentioned in previous podcasts. There comes a point later where we watch the entire saga in order. We're mm -hmm. saving it for that because we have thoughts. <laughs> um, I think because of the way we ended up watching a couple of the the midquels, um, those don't happen until 2020 as opposed to 2019. One, I think. I, I think Solo I think minimum. Two. Solo and um, Rogue, Rogue One. One. Uh, but we can talk about those then, because I don't... Buddy, we're it's we're not going to wait till 2021 to do another one of these. We're... Well, and that's what I'm saying, is, yeah, we're not going to we're not gonna wait. I mean, we might be there by that time, but... Um, we'll get there, when we get there. I'd like to talk about them all at once, was more my point. I don't want to split up my thoughts and be like, all right, we'll catch you with the midquel opinions next podcast. No, we'll get it all out of the way at once. And then when we get to that podcast, we'll just skip them. Yep. Uh, then... Star Wars Episode 7, Return of the Jedi. Luke? Luke's crazy. He can't even take care of himself, much less rescue anybody. Wookie noises. A Jedi Knight? Jeez, I'm out of it for a little while and everyone gets delusions of grandeur. Good old Han Solo. Let's get you another one here. Oh, wait, I think we meet up. So, uh... No, no I've got a few. You missed the beginning few. of that marathon. I did. Um, I watched the, I think this is probably going to end up being the entirety of the Harry Potter movie franchise because the person, a person who used to live in our house really likes re-watching things. I would not have watched these on my own. They're fine movies. 
uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to bed before either of you come up with another I clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. She needs to sort out her priorities. I like the expression on Rupert Grint's face here. Just like, damn shame. <laughs> Someone who just lost a small amount of money on Wall Street kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no, I also skipped the no. two and three. Who knows, man? And it's during a part of my life that I just don't remember very well. So it's like, who knows what's going on? Look, up and it took me this long to go, I guess I watched all those movies in the same day. <laughs> no, clearly, that's not the case. The new Facebook can throw an update. Uh, I don't know if we've mentioned it directly. That's where these lists are. So... Um, but don't stalk our Facebooks because we don't want to be friends with you. Eh, I probably won't be friends with you, and I don't use my Facebook for anything. I mean, that's like a bigger thing. But like, God, if you want to follow us, do it on Twitter. I don't tweet either, but I, you are more likely to get a response than yeah. if you try and go to my Facebook. Um, Facebooks are for families and nothing else. Uh, I watched John dies at the end. Um, oh wow, this is a big long quote, but I think it's cool as hell. Uh, I'm not going to do the Jamaican accent for all of it. You had this one early this morning in the middle of a thunderstorm. And in the dream, you were back with your girlfriend, Tina. And you come home, and she's there with this big honking pile of dynamite and one of those cartoon plunger detonators ready to blow. And you say, what are you doing? And she says, this. And boom, your eyes snap open, and the explosion at the end of your dream became the clap of thunder outside your window. So tell me, man, am I close? You see, you gotta ask yourself. You gotta really be brave to ask yourself the scary questions. How did your mind know, David, that the thunder was coming? Hmm? The thunder came right as she hit the detonator at the end of your dream. Your mind started a dream 30 seconds before the thunder. How did the mind know the thunder was coming? Well, that's at the beginning of the movie. This was a cool flick. I didn't think it was going to be good, given who wrote it. Um, I'm very familiar with the author. Um, he hosted a podcast I listened to for a long time. He was an editor at Cracked. I have never read a single word of his writing and don't plan to. But, uh, I, something made me watch this. I don't remember what. Um, and I, I dug it. It was pretty interesting. It kind of fell off the rails for the end, but the well, rest of it was pretty good. Died, so. This is what the title of the movie is. Yeah. Came That's out something. in 2012. So it fell off the rails because John died at the end. Or maybe, you know, is that it staying on the rails? This is where we finally meet up. Yeah, so theoretically January 17th. I'm really Actually, sad you know that what? my dates are off. Uh, look at my date. Yeah, January 17th. Yeah, 17th. So we can use my dates from here on out. For some reason, yours broke. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's going to be hard to catch up. But whatever, we'll deal with it. Uh, we watched Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fear. Yep. Um, my quote was, Promise you'll write this summer, both of you. Psh! <laughs> I won't. You know I won't. <laughs> uh-huh. That's one of the few quotes from the Harry Potter movies, which is entirely from the movies and is not in any of the books that I fucking love. Just an entire invention from the movies, and it's great. And it's down to Rupert Grint, who is the best fucking actor of, the, of those three. <laughs> uh, I watched the same movie, and the quote I chose, and I have forgotten all context for it, so I will deliver it without any inflection. There she was, just walking by. You know how I like it when they walk. I couldn't help it. It just sort of slipped out. Actually, he sort of screamed at her. It was a bit frightening. (laughs) Devoid of context. Terrifying. Uh, The context is they off-screen in the movie adaptation, uh, I believe maybe in the book, it's been too long, Ron trying to ask out uh, Fleur de la Cleur to the Yule Ball. Okay. And he is... um, well, it doesn't go well for him. Uh, but not because he took his dick out. No. That's not the it that just slipped out. No. Okay, good. Um, well, you kept watching Harry Potter and I yep. fucking stopped, so. Uh, I think I've chosen this for a couple different times I've watched Harry Potter. Another one that is solely from the movies. Not, not a line lifted from the books. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince from 2009. She's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Uh, and then he gets hit in the head with a book. I watched Masters of the Universe, the 1987 live-action adaptation of Heman. 
Never think while you're hungry was the quote I chose. That's just good life advice. Yeah, it sure is, man. I'm hangry is real. Uh, this movie is '80s. I mean, yeah, it is. I like it, but not as an adaptation. I think it's just fine as a whatever. I would have accepted this with characters who weren't He-Man and Skeletor. Like if you just renamed the characters. Yeah, because it's one of those. Well, it's Isekai, I guess. Yeah. So, like, I'm not super hot. It's uh, Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. It's regular person go fantasy world. Let's see what happens. Other way around, actually. Oh, neat! Oh, so it's it's like Beastmaster. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, but a less good Beastmaster. Because Beastmaster's way better. Beastmaster's a great movie. I have seen Beastmaster in forever. Uh, I would recommend He-Man. It is a less good Beastmaster. <clears throat> okay, we watched this together. A movie. January 31st. So you did watch all that shit in January. Yeah, I just f- put into my maw. Uh, <clears throat> Star Wars, episode 7. Did I say 6, 7 before? You I said it's... 7 before, but I wasn't going to call you out on it because I'm I... a good friend. Yeah, it's... it's... Eh, I have no excuse. That was dumb. Uh... <laughs> you hallucinated a second one, or I, after the, the VI. Well, let's go with that, yeah. sure. Uh, it's all the drugs you're on. Uh, yeah, episode seven, The Force Awakens. Shh. Uh, that's not how the Force works. Oh, what an excellent quote for that trilogy. But we'll save the rest for later. Mm, we watched, we, I guess, watched Dimitri Martin live at the time. 25th. God, I love his sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's some Mitch Hedberg shit right uh, there. I have an L-shaped <clears throat> sofa. Lowercase. One little cheese girl for me. That'd be great. Uh, this is obviously a comedy special. And what do you say about a comedy special, really? The jokes were good. I remember liking them. Yeah. Dimitri Martin's a pretty funny guy. This, I believe, is the first time I watched, and I don't know that I've rewatched it, so the only time I watched, John Wick from 2014. There's not really spoilers for John Wick at this point. You know what the deal is with this movie. Um, it is... White has never seen it. Um, I it's, don't plan on it. I mean, it sounds good. I just don't care. It is a really fucking good action movie. It is a really good action movie with interesting world building. I've never seen any of the sequels. I They don't interest me. But this movie is a package that is complete all its own. And... Uh, Keanu Reeves does a stellar fucking job in it. Also, Kevin Nash is in it. It basically relaunched his career. It's not like he was dead in the water or anything, but John Wick came out and suddenly Keanu Reeves was like... Keanu Reeves again. Yeah. And good, because he's a really nice fucking dude, so he deserves it. He's a good vampire or whatever. Yeah, he's definitely not an immortal. Listen, man, I'll I'll cover for you. Just tell me how you do the immortal thing. (laughs) And Keanu Reeves was to our podcast? The listener is all people. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, your quote for the movie? <clears throat> Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. That's Kevin Nash. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is where I watched Lord of War because you watched it and I went, I want to see that movie. Again, because Again, you told me to watch it. I love this movie. I genuinely do. Um, <clears throat> my quote was, you call me evil, but unfortunately for you, I'm a necessary evil. The Good only quote. reason it's not the opening uh, monologue from the movie is because I know I would have picked that before. <laughs> I I want to catch up here because I know we saw this together, but nope, it's all it's all kerfuckled. Kerfuckled? Yeah, my my the dates on my Facebook thing—they're yeah. all wrong. All right, uh, let's see here. It's another movie for you. Another movie for me. Uh, I watched, in February of that year, Django Unchained. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> it's a great quote, especially where it happens in the movie. This is a good movie. I'm surprised I still haven't watched it. It's a Quentin Tarantino-ass movie. Well, that I was is a, a good movie. I was a huge Quentin Tarantino fan in high school, and, like... Also, the line I picked is one of maybe five lines of dialogue in the movie that I was comfortable putting on my Facebook. <laughs> mm, I imagine. <laughs> uh, but, like, I haven't seen anything of his since... I just didn't care for Inglorious Bastards that much. 
I think that just shot me in the chest a little bit. Yeah, and to be fair, this is very much a similar vibe. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a revenge fantasy, alternate history sort of deal. Yeah. And it's, again, I love it, but... I could see why you wouldn't be super interested thereby, because it's not a. It's obviously a different setting than World War Two. It is the Old West, uh, the, the but and the antebellum or the uh, you know pre Civil War South, but uh, yeah, it's just if if it's not something that feels like if it's not something you think you would want to watch based on it being fairly similar in terms of overall mission statement to Inglorious Bastards. You might want to give it a pass. Well, I think it's more that, like, because of the... Because I wasn't just that blown away by Inglorious Bastards. It just didn't have that quotable quality to oh, it. Oh, yeah, Inglorious Bastards isn't nearly as quotable. And it just wasn't as, like, fiery. It had a lot of this slow moments. This is a better movie. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think because of Inglorious Bastards, everything he did after that got put on my will watch eventually list instead of becoming a priority. It's the movie where he lost your immediate buy-in. Yeah, pretty much. And I, I just didn't realize that until this conversation, because uh, that was the last movie of his that I watched. There you go. Well, yeah, we learned something today we did. Yay, we caught up. We watched Deadpool. I guess that was February 16th. Yep. Um, my quote for Deadpool was, I'm so proud of you. I went with Wham. Heh. <laughs> the band. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did a podcast on Deadpool. You can go watch that if you want. We both enjoyed it. I think it's a really good adaptation of the of the comic book character. Mm -hmm. uh, it distills lots about what's, like, what makes the character good and leaves behind lots about what makes the character sometimes fucking insufferable. Yeah. So, just a good job. Yep, overall. Very good. Um, I don't believe I watched that. Oh, you definitely didn't. Uh, in late February, I watched In Bruges. <clears throat> This morning and this afternoon, we're doing what I want to do. Got it? Of course, which I presume will involve culture. We shall strike a balance between culture and fun. This is a remarkably serious movie for at the same time being essentially a very banal movie about two dudes going on vacation together when they don't want to. Wow. Also, they're assassins. <laughs> I, you know, you, you said all of that, and I was like, why was I not at least kind of interested in this movie? I remember the title and it being very well spread. Ah, uh, okay. Also, they're assassins. Uh, Don't think you watched that. No, and I know we watched this together, I'm pretty sure. So This may be one of the few years where I have a lot more movies than you. Well, he, I think you end up with four more than me, but you started strong. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I watched Justice League War uh, from 2014. <clears throat> I am Darkseid. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you've seen his extended family, why would you? Yeah. Oh God. Mm. That's is it? Is it? Is it still? Don't mention better podcasts on your podcast, and we're talking about one of our own podcasts. Podcast. Podcast. Uh, then I watched Me, Him, Her. Why would you walk thirty emotional miles when you could just walk one? Beat. Or I don't know, some better metaphor, man. <laughs> I feel that line very deeply. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good movie. Uh, directorial debut for a writer I very much enjoy the work of, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> and We did a podcast on that, too. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, but this is, this is a good movie. It is a, kind of a departure from most of what you'll find on my list of movies, in that this is... Uh, it's almost as just a straight up rom com. Uh, I think it's that sort of Kevin Smith vibe. That's really smart. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> only less gross. <laughs> well, you've sold me. There's nobody's dick jokes I got tired of faster than Kevin Smith's dick jokes. Uh, and then I watched 
Jimmy Carr, one of his many stand-up specials, uh, Funny Business from 2016. If you're not laughing, you're learning. That's good, too. Look at that head. He's got a big fucking head. He's and making a, weird a gesture laugh. as though to describe the size of his head. <laughs> In this photo, it's he's making big arms is the joke. This is a it's not a visual medium. Unless I use specifically this picture for the podcast logo, which I might. Fuck it. <laughs> Put the two nerds logo yeah, in between. Yeah, just like right over here. Oh, in between? Oh, that's brilliant. That's not very good, like, YouTubing, but... No, uh, no, no. You use others around him, but he's the centerpiece. I see. Holding our... Hold, holding holding the aloft logo. Yeah. the logo. What a world we live. Did you like the special? Oh, yeah. it's. I mean, I love Jimmy Carr's uh, comedy. He's, he is a very dirty, very edgy comedian who is a very proper English gentleman in a business suit. And the the con- the conflict therein is amusing. It's a good shtick. Um, then I watched American Ultra from 2015, uh, which is uh, the line, the quote I chose was, who tells you what to do? Nobody. That must be nice. That's a fucking heartbreaking line. Um, just so we're clear... That shit is hurtful in the movie. Um, yeah, kind of in real life, too. Yeah. And this is a really good movie. This movie struggles with what it wants to be. It struggles from conflicting visions, it feels like. But it is still a good movie. And, uh, unfortunately for the universe spawned a very mean impression that was put on the silver screen for the whole world to see a few years later. <clears throat> so sometimes life is like that. Um, you, are you sure we watched your next movie together? Maybe we didn't. I don't know, though. Okay, we definitely watched that together. Yeah, so we we'll just keep rolling, my guy. Okay. Fuck it. Hey, I went for a bunch in a row. It's your turn. Uh, then I watched Patton Oswald Talking for Clapping. I literally chose the phrase, into the woods. And boy, howdy, if that doesn't fit my vibe right now. Well, and like, here's here's the thing. I believe you said you wanted to mention this on the podcast. You had a plan. When yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you will see the number of movies I watch go down sharply after this podcast. Uh, not after this podcast, but after this year. Because I think this year may have broken me to a certain extent. Not for the reasons you're thinking. Uh, (laughs) I went into this year going, I want to watch a movie a week. I want to watch one movie every week. I want to watch 52 movies a year. Uh, Just because I really was digging watching movies and comedy specials and stuff at the time. So I got, spoilers, to 50. Because near the end of the year, I was like, if I can get to 50, I'll take it. It's a nice round number. Uh, And I have watched markedly less visual media of of the you know feature length type since then every year and uh, and less every year <laughs> so like i would i was watching stuff that i not wouldn't necessarily was su- i wasn't necessarily super excited to see just i could watch that and i got a thing i want to do yeah um i uh was not doing such a thing so the reason between the gulf, other than we can't have any clue what date anything happens on because my Facebook's fucked up. My dates are fine. Yeah, yours are all fine. Um, is that I wasn't trying to watch something every week. Nope. So, so we got way out of sync in a way we're not usually. Uh, uh, well, after this we are. Do you remember the context of in uh, that was It was the punchline to a joke. Uh, I believe the context is something. Uh, Patton Oswalt is in the context, in the the construction of the joke he has grown tired of his life and simply divests himself of all material goods and walks away into the woods in the new wwe game the the arcade action one whose name i've forgotten battleground i think Mm -hmm. uh, at some point in story mode brock lesnar loses a wrestling match and so he gives a monologue about how it's on this person's home turf and that's the only reason he won as he walks into the swamp Yes, just directly into it, into yes. the water. And I feel like the designers of WWE Brattleground have more truly captured the spirit of Brock Lesnar than any previous game makers in, in recorded history. It's powerful. 
Okay. Well, um, maybe yeah. I watched this without you after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jurassic World, I watched. I don't... I think you watched this twice then. You know what? Yes. This is when my mom took me again because she didn't believe that I didn't like it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, monstrous relative term. To a canary, a cat is a monster. We're just used to being the cat. Uh, I gave my thoughts on a previous podcast about my feelings on this movie. But don't worry, listener, we're not far off because then we both watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Uh, Mitsu, is that for real? The vibes in here just turned bad. I picked that line because the delivery was so earnest. Uh, then I watched this with him, and to date, I don't believe I had seen this movie before. I saw it in theaters. We will both die, but only one of us with honor. I picked that because out of a fucking really absurdly goofy movie, that is a hardcore fucking line. This movie went back and forth. It was either the Ninja Turtles were doing goofy shit, or... Things were very serious, and it was kind of a dry samurai movie. I would have liked more of the second thing. Uh, Or amp up, if it wasn't a dry samurai movie, and if it was more of a samurai action movie. Uh, You know what, honestly, I would have liked this movie to be the blend it wanted to be, and have the Ninja Turtles capable of being slightly more serious, because a dry samurai movie with, with, like, normal, not fucking hyper goofy Ninja Turtles in it, well, that right there is the dry is gone. Yeah, you got your sauce, your turtle sauce. It's uh, it's how Shredder likes it. Tonight we dine. Um, <laughs> uh, then we watched uh, Captain America: Civil War. I chose the perennial favorite. I can do this all day. Um, it's not the best line in the movie. Ah, uh, no, yes, because the speech, uh, the, <laughs> the lines I chose were. Can you move your seat up? No. <laughs> Such a good line. Uh, yeah, the the speech they give to Sharon Carter in this film is one of my favorite speeches of all time. I use it as inspirational fodder uh, rather Same. frequently. I, I'm not going to do the speech. Watch the fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we watch Deadpool again. Yeah. Because it's a really good movie. I think I, we were showing it to someone else also. Yeah, uh, we watched it in theaters again, I believe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, my... God damn it, I just read my quote, and it's still a really funny scene. All the dinosaurs feared the T-Rex. <laughs> uh, I would go with you, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good energy there. Uh, I'm going to do one. Yeah, do one. Go. Um, I, w- I watched how Pitch Perfect 2 happened in the room with me. Uh, the first one was okay. This one is not. Uh, but the quote I chose was, what kind of white shit is this? (laughs) Is that about the movie that's currently happening? Does someone look directly into camera and say it? I mean, more or less, yeah. They're, they're pretty tongue-in-cheek. They're pretty self-aware. I don't hate these movies. They just are not. I would never put this shit in on my own. Uh, some of you may be able to detect a pattern to this section of 2016's, uh, movies for me. Uh, in May, I watched Chronicle from 2012. Why did you catch him? This is this is an interesting fucking movie. Uh, I, re- I really like it. It has some flaws. It is apparently the Power Rangers movie from a few years later. Uh, that's weird. That was a weird choice on their part to make Power Rangers this movie. This is this makes a bad Power Rangers movie, and as I understand it, that's what happened. Um, I feel like the climax is really neat. Uh, I feel like all the acting is really good, and it is a good use of the found footage genre. I have a hard time seeing the title of anything that ends in onicle and not doing bionicle. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Even though I honestly couldn't... like Chronicle: The Rise of Matanui. <laughs> uh, yeah, you. Like, I, I could not have made that joke because I know fucking nothing about bionicle except that it was a Lego thing. Uh, I know Bionicle, The Rise of Montanui. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> we each have our strengths, I guess. I need to watch this. You do, actually. This You would love this. Yeah, I would. You would like this way better than I do. I would. I don't know why. I, my hands are broken and I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watched What We Do in the Shadows. 
Leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. Oh, God, he was bidding on eBay, wasn't he? I'm not going to tell you. Uh, you have to watch the movie. <laughs> I, I, it makes me laugh. Uh, okay, we catch up there again. Oh, I watched Smoke Signals, a 1998 movie about basically a coming-of-age tale about Native Americans. Um, i got to watch this. Why haven't I watched this? I don't what? know, man. I told you to. It was good. You did? What? My hands are broken. I can't see. <laughs> Sometimes it's a good day to die. Sometimes it's a good day to have breakfast. God damn it. Why haven't I watched this it's, movie? It's really, like, it's got a lot of heart. It, it's got a lot of heart. I really enjoyed watching it. Uh, and then I watched The Running Man. <laughs> uh, I don't do requests. This was, like... This is what the Mortal Kombat movie would have been if they made it when the game came out. Yes. <laughs> also, this is... Not similar no, to the source material. Not. This is not even remotely similar. This is a different concept. It's like Blood and Chocolate. This okay. Is a different. Uh, I went to see that movie uh, with a friend of mine and came home to you, and we were talking about how good it was, and you were like, no. And we went, why is that? And then you told us, it's different. And I looked up how different, and my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I'm remembering this now. Um. Ooh, and then I watched the best Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. It's late. Go back to sleep. Best Nightmare on Elm Street's the one with the power glove. Come at me. I will, and you're very close. <laughs> uh, the ending to this is kind of rough. It's where they go, man, we really should include Freddy Krueger in this Freddy Krueger movie. Uh, and it just sort of jam it on the last little bit, and it's, it's kind of weird, but... The rest of it, really good. Really well done. I will I will stand for this film. You forgot the power glove! Uh, I watched a lot of movies. This is going to be one of those, instead of back and forth, it's chunk by chunk here. I'll take it. That's, yeah. that's a good vibe. Uh, I finally caught Moonrise Kingdom. It's not an accomplishment button. I inherited it from my mother. It's not actually meant for a male to wear it, but I don't give a damn. Um, I don't know how to describe this film... Uh, I think I don't think you possibly could describe this film any better than uh, the screenshot I'm looking at, which is a very specifically well-appointed kind of twee um, period piece with a fondness for pastels and muted colors. Did Wes Anderson make this? <laughs> I genuinely did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a Wes Anderson film uh, about a camp. And Dude, that guy's that guy's vibe is so easy to pick out of a lineup. It's so specific, and I I like Wes Anderson films, and this I, is one of them. I just I, I swear to you, I did not know this was one of his movies. Yeah, I believe it's you. just it, look at it. It's a Wes Anderson and movie. This is even like one of the least Wes Andersony screenshots I've Nah, I dude, look at the symmetry and the little gap in between them. Right, I saw the movie, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> this is the least one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. I I I, I, uh, I liked it. Um We finally caught up again. All right. Number 26 uh, on my list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, which has the best fucking quote that we still use not every day anymore but occasionally we will bust it out which is my man uh, we this... are bebop and rock steady <laughs> <laughs> um there are only a couple of things i didn't care for about this movie uh but i i'm i overall was very happy with it uh, smart viewers of the Tuners podcast who've either seen our podcast about this movie or other podcasts about similar fare will know neither of us cottons to the Michael Bay hate train. This movie's great. <laughs> um, the last Transformers movie I watched was really good. Uh, the one with Patrick Dempsey. I didn't see that one. I, I think oh, wait, I... No, 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 no did. I did. I yeah. did. I was thinking of Mark Wahlberg. No, I, that, those are the ones I haven't seen. Uh, but yeah, no, that was good. That was yeah, a good movie. I really liked that one. Those too. movies are good. The, the rest of them are okay. They're not. They're certainly not bad. The the people who think those movies are bad wanted more out of those movies than a Transformers movie was ever going to give you. I I feel like if they had done the same movie with less Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> well, gosh, if they'd cast a different actor in the lead role, and the Transformers themselves were less 
overly detailed. Because there were fight scenes, especially in the first movie, where I had no clue what was going on. People say that. I have never gotten that criticism. I Like, it, it, the second and third movies, not as bad. And there was not all of the fight scenes, but like, especially when Megatron was there. Because the, the homeboy is just a bunch of gears. He's gray gears, yeah. He's gray gears. I and mean, if he's fighting somebody who's got battle damage, they're basically just gray gears now, too. So it just gets really hard to keep track of sometimes. But uh, this movie. This movie. This movie that we're talking about here. I, I thought this was good. I'm sad we didn't get a third one. But I'm looking forward to the next Ninja Turtles movie they make. Same. I think they'll be really good. Okay, yeah, because Turtles is good. I want to watch more of the latest the, series. Ninja Turtles aren't quite Spider-Man. It is possible to make a bad Ninja Turtles. But... We don't but, talk about that here. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We'll move right along, move right along. What's your, what was your quote for the Fucking movie? Fucking Master Splinter's Brontosaurus Dildo Dreams. Uh, it's yummy, is what I picked. I don't remember what that oh, was. Oh, it was definitely to. a Bebop and Rock. Uh, yeah, I feel one. like it. Look at these good boys. Oh, they're great. Good boys and their biter, biter sickles? Uh, biter sickles. Biter sickles. <laughs> sickles. You know what? No, we're wrapping it right fucking there. I uh, fuck it, yeah. Uh, this is going to be a two-parter because we got too many movies to go over and shit's all out of whack. So guess what? Everything's better when nerds talk about it. Biter-sickles. Biter-sickles!